Hey guys, welcome to Country Fingers. My name is Eva and today we're gonna be doing a walk through that camera shelf. Yeah, so today I thought it would be pretty interesting to go through that shelf and see what we have in terms of cameras. You're gonna see all the cameras I have at home now, except for the one that I'm shooting with, which is a Canon 60 Mark II. And yeah, a little bit of the story behind me and photography. I started to be interested in photography quite early on because my father was interested in photography and taking photos was something that was always at home. And then later on, I got a digital camera, the SLR, DSLR, back in 2007, I think it was. And it wasn't until 2010 that I started to get interested in analog photography, which is something that I love. And you're gonna see in that shelf, the majority are analog cameras. And yeah, so I was really into analog photography and then I developed my brand, my lifestyle and portrait brand. I started working with clients so I kind of lost a little bit touch with the analog photography that I love so much and with the creative side of taking photos for a couple of years and I was more into you know using the digital system I was using the 60 camera and not so much into the analog use the using the film cameras that I own but since a couple of months back I'm actually back into it and I have to say that I have missed it a lot I realized why I was so in love with shooting film and why I was so in love with shooting with different cameras and I'm very happy to go back back at it and now being able to share it with you so yeah intro shelf here we are let's go through the camera shelf what do we have here first we have the little lomo lca with a beautiful minitar 32 millimeter 2.8 lens this is one of my favorite point and shoot cameras that i have worked with it really delivers very nice images. It has an inbuilt light meter, so it will actually expose for you. And I have to say that the exposure is perfect, perfect. I want to do a video on detail about this camera because I really, really like it. And here we have the Olympus XA. This is one of the cameras that Jimmy has lent me to work with the new bodies. Uh, so I have only shot one roll through it uh, now since I came back to analog and I have loved it. I loved shooting with it. It's an aperture priority rangefinder, which uh, allows me to really work with the depth of field I want to work with. And it has also a built-in light meter, so it will expose the shot correctly. And it does really a good, good job in it. Here we have our most recent acquisition, I think. This is the Canon Prima 105 and we decided to get this camera because we wanted to have a point and shoot that has a big zoom because sometimes we like to get close to things so with this we can actually zoom in and get uh, get the shot that we're really looking after that sometimes with some of the point and shoots and some of our analog cameras we cannot really do here we have a tiny little beast this is the lomo super sampler this guy with four eyes and what this camera does is that it shoots four images in sequence, like chuck, 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 chuck. So you can get actually the motion of the thing that is happening, the scene that you're taking a picture of. It's quite a fun camera to work with. Here we have the Diana F Plus. And this was actually the first analog camera that I bought for myself back in 2010, I believe. Lomography was kind of on a hype and I was getting interested in analog photography and I decided to get this one for myself. It's uh, originally a medium format camera, but it can also get some adapt adapters to work with uh, 35 mm film. Here we have the Polaroid 6, 6, 660 and this is the camera of my childhood. There's a lot of, this is the actual camera of my childhood, my parents gave this to me. So this is the camera that actually captured the first photo of me ever taken, basically a few hours after I was born. And it has also captured a lot of family moments uh, since then until Polaroid and nanolog photography cannot die out. Uh, so I'm very happy to have it. Uh, nowadays, Polaroid is making film again. 
to over some time it was the impossible film but now one can buy cartridges eight shots per cartridge a little bit expensive but those cameras are still uh, very very well working here we have another instant camera this is the fujifilm instax y this is the first instant camera i got for myself uh, probably was back in 2012, I believe. And yeah, uh, when Polaroid kind of went out of business in instant film, um, Fuji was still working on it and has not really stopped. And the Fuji system has been really popular and rather inexpensive to get the cartridges. So I went into it with this uh, instant wide format, which has the same area as the Polaroid but in a wide format. I'm talking about another instant camera. Here we have the SQ6, which is a Fuji system camera in a square format. And it's a little bit smaller, or maybe actually a lot smaller than the square ones that come from the Polaroid. But the colors of the Fuji film is really, really nice. And it's, as I said, rather inexpensive. So it's a, uh, it's a pleasure to work with. And I really like it to take it out for fun, but also actually for playing work as a so backup to have photos taken in the moment. If we continue here, what we have is actually a digital camera. This digital camera is my Fuji X100S, and this is uh, my companion. This has come with me for holidays, and it's basically a camera that is so light and so easy to carry all the time, and with a very fast f2 23 millimeter lens, basically can be used uh, any time for anything, very good for street photography, super, super silent and I really like working with it as well. The colors of the Fuji sensor are superb, I really love them. Here we move into the Konica C35EF. This Konica actually is probably my best find. I got it in a Japanese um, street market for equivalent to three US dollars, which was nothing even had batteries inside. I just went into a camera store, got a roll of film and shot it right away. I only had like three days left in Japan and everything works perfectly. The shots of that film came out very, very nice. And I also have to say that this camera is kind of an iconic camera because Andy Warhol used to have the same model, the same camera to take photos of his parties and the after parties and the premieres. So it's kind of, um, a flagship camera, I would say, of the Konica point and shoot. If we continue here, we have a little bit of an oddity, rarity. This is actually a digital old Jessica. It's pretty cute. A co-worker gave it to me and it is digital. I don't think I have ever used it really because once I got it, I had already other digitals that had bigger sensors. This has only like five megapixels, so you can imagine. But I think it's a fine toy camera. It also has a plastic lens, so it's a bit of like bringing this toy camera feeling into the digital world. Mm -hmm. And I'm keeping it and I hope maybe one day I can give it to a kid, maybe my future kids to play with, because it's quite fun also to have. If we continue here, we have the Canon EOS 500, which is an analog camera. It's not the 500D, which will be digital. And it's paired up with my Nifty 50, the 50 millimeter 1.8 Canon lens. This camera I got actually quite recently because I wanted to have a body for all the Canon lenses that I own from my digital system that I've been using for client work in the past two or three years. So now that I'm back into analog, I'm like, I want to get something where I can use the lenses I have. I have a 35 1.4 that is amazing. I have an 85 1.8 that I like a lot. So with this little thing, I can then use my lenses. And I have shot one roll with it so far, which we are right now working on it. And we developed it last weekend, and now we're working on turning the negatives into positive film. And I'm really looking forward to see how they come out. Here we have the Voigtlander Vito V. And this is the only camera in this shelf that I have not yet put a roll through it. I am yet to do it. Uh, partially I didn't do it because it doesn't have a built-in light meter so I could use the phone one but I wanted to get a real light meter but now I can use this beauty here which is a Pentax spot meter that uh, Jimmy has lent me so I can use that to run a roll through it and see that it doesn't have light leaks that is actually working properly this one's for the 50s from the 50s so probably it's the oldest one I would have shot with if I get to put a roll through it 
Here we have the Lubitel 166B, which is a twin reflex lens that takes uh, six by six pictures in medium format film. And this is quite cool to play with because it has um, waist viewfinder, which I find that it changes the way you see pictures and you see about taking photos. And it's also from the original Lomo brand. So uh, you can see there in the Russian letters Lomo. Uh, this one is from the 80s, I believe. Here we have on its side the iconic Polaroid XX70. This is another one of the cameras that uh, Jimmy has lent me to, to try and play with. And this one takes XX70 film, which now Polaroid is making again. And it's actually a very sought after Polaroid camera. Also, there's some company Mint that is working in refurbishing them and selling them at quite a high price and also tweaking them because uh, the XS70 film originally is a very slow film. You need a lot of light for it to work. And now they're kind of tweaking them so they can take also the same film that the 600 Polaroid takes, which is more light sensitive and it can be nicely used indoors as we, we all know with the, working with the flash. What else do we have here? Here we have the camera of my childhood. This is the Voigtlander Dynalux 1200D. This is the camera that my parents bought for me so I could take pictures myself when I was a kid. I think I was maybe nine, 10 years old. And it's nothing special, but it's kind of dear to me because it was actually the first analog camera that I owned ever. Not that I bought for myself, but that I owned. Here we have just a disposable one that I found actually in the trash, completely uh, in its package, non use. We'll see what we shoot with it. And here we have another icon. This is a Kodak Brownie. This Kodak Brownie is the baby brownie special and it's from the 40s, but unfortunately it cannot really be used because it takes 127 film, which is not longer in production. But I think it's kind of cool because brownie camera was actually the flagship camera from Kodak and is the, is the camera that allowed basically photography to come into everyone's house and become something that everybody had access to. This camera back in the days, in the 40s, uh, late 40s, 50s, cost $1.25. So of course back then that was money, but it was quite affordable. So that's really, really nice to have one of these iconic pieces. And here we have the Sorky 4. The Sorky 4 is basically the Russian copy of the Leica. <laughs> And this was, was actually, I believe, the one that they made more copies of, the most popular of the Sorky line. They made about 1.7 million copies of this camera. This one is a bit refurbished, as you can see, it has a red leatherette, which I think it makes it look super cool. And I have it paired with a 50 millimeter Jupiter original lens, an F2 kind of fast one. I have shot a couple of rolls through it. For one reason or another, I think because I wasn't really metering right, Nothing very special came out of it, but now that I have that spot meter I mentioned about, I want to try again and see if I can get it to get good results. And here we have the Minolta SRT 303B, which is also the camera of my childhood because this was the camera, the SLR that my father owned when I was growing up. And tons of photos have been taken with this camera of my childhood, of, my, of the family memories. And when I went into photography and especially into analog photography, my father was not really using it anymore. So he gave me the camera with all the lenses and I'm very grateful that I can have it in this collection. Here we have another camera that Jimmy has lent me to work with and that's the Jessica. It's a contemporary camera with them in Ulta. They're both from the mid late 70s. And this Jessica, it's paired up with a 50 millimeter 1.7 lens right now. And we have been shooting a couple of Lomochrome um, uh, rolls through it. So we are waiting to, to work with these ones and see how it's doing. But I saw the negatives really quickly and it kind of looks amazingly sharp and nice. So I'm really looking forward to work with those shots a little bit more. And here we have the last one of the collection, which is a bit of a um, hate-love relationship I have with it. Because in principle, I love it. It's a rangefinder. I love to work with rangefinders. It has a very fast lens, 1.7, uh, 45 millimeters, very nice framing uh, focal length as well. 
but I had some problems with it because these ones are not this, they are very well known for having some problems with the metering because some of the parts inside get a little bit uh, destroy over time and one has to open it and change them I did all that still I think it's not metering correctly could be that I didn't use a film that was too good with it so problems here and there so yet I don't have very good photos with it but I'm willing to give it another chance and see what we can do with it and yeah so this is the camera shelf and if you stay tuned new videos dedicated videos of all these cameras are gonna come up so we will discuss the pros and the cons the way that they work some sample images on them and all those topics hope you guys enjoy going through the cameras that i have at home if there is a particular camera that you like please comment in the section below tell us which ones do you like to hear which ones do you want to have more information about or if you actually share some of the cameras that we have that would be super cool to get into a conversation about them what are your favorite cameras so on and so forth so thank you for being with us don't forget to like and subscribe i hope to see you back here soon